Are you ready to risk it all and try to get the highest score? Let's get rolling and learn how to play High Score by Reiner Knizia, a competitive dice game that marries the luck of the dice with sneakily strategic gameplay and ever-changing rules. Each round, players are going to turn over a new challenge card. That's going to tell them what the parameters for scoring are that round. Then they're gonna take turns rolling the die and they're trying to get, wait for it, the highest score. The player with the highest score at the end of seven rounds is gonna be the big winner. This is a fun brain teaser of a dice game for two to five players ages eight and up. Will you keep your first roll or try to push your luck and get a little bit better score than your opponents? Let's get rolling. To set up the game, plop the board on the table and have each player choose a colored playing piece. I pick blue, so you're going to then put that in the middle of the board. So let's say we're playing with these three other players. Then you are going to grab one of these little tokens. So they're gonna have a 30 on one side, grab the color that corresponds to your colored playing piece and put it in front of you with the blank side facing up. Next, you are going to grab these really psychedelic looking cards. These are the challenge cards. You're gonna shuffle them up and then deal out seven cards. These are the only challenge cards you are going to need for this entire game. The rest you can put back in the box to be used at another time. Now the player who wants to go first is gonna grab the dice and we can get rolling. Each game of high score is going to last seven rounds. You're gonna start each round by taking your challenge card and turning it face up where everybody can see it. Then you're going to assess what that challenge card means. Now I'm gonna teach you how to read a challenge card. The green box tells you how much the void value is worth. The void value is going to be that fun little spiral mark on the dice. Next, let's look at the yellow box. The yellow box is going to tell you how many dice you can re-roll and how many times you can do that. Lastly, the gray box is going to tell you which dice are actually going to count towards your final score for this round. This challenge card tells me that the void value is going to be six this round. It says that after your initial roll of seven dice, you can roll as many or as few dice as you want to up to three times total. And then lastly, the gray box means that the only dice that are going to count this round are dices that are in pairs. So say I have two twos and two threes, those are going to count. Two void dice will also count, but one lone three, that's not gonna count this round. You're just gonna set it aside. It's not gonna affect your score negatively. Once every player understands the rules on the challenge card, it's time to get rolling. Let's play around. So I'm gonna start out by rolling the dice. Big money, big money. All right, so that was not actually an awful roll. Now, things to keep in mind is that the void value is six. So I'm gonna wanna keep those void dice. And also, the only dice that score are gonna be in pairs. So these two void dice right here, I'm gonna wanna keep. These two fives, I think I'm also gonna keep. And uh, according to the yellow, I can roll any amount of dice I want, but I only have three rolls. So if I really wanted to, I could choose to re-roll those fives later. Keep in mind, I need pairs. Let's go. Okay, I have a pair of threes, but three is not super high. And I've got two more, so I'm gonna risk it. Now I have a pair of twos. Do I keep that? Mm, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. You know, it was the exact same thing. So that last void dice is sadly not going to count, but the rest of my dice are. So now I'm going to total everything up. All right, so I have lumped them off into pairs. I have two void dice, so each of those are going to be worth six points, that's 12, plus two fives, 10, plus four for my two twos. So my score for this round is going to be 26. So now I'm gonna go back to my little board, grab my favorite color blue, grab that little token, and I'm gonna find the 26 on the board. So an important thing to note is that if you have a zero or negative score because you're bad at this game, your piece, <laughs> your piece is not going to move at all. Also, it's important to remember that say if my score had been 36, 
I would have moved it to the six and then flipped over my little point marker right here to the 30 side so that I remember that I have over 30 points. And lastly, you can never be on the same exact score number as another player. So say me and my lovely camera person, Claire, are playing together and I got 36, let's keep it right there, and she also got 36, she's gonna have to put her piece on the 35. But if, say, she has lapped me and I actually only have eight points and she has 48 points, we can then share a space because we don't have the same score. The important thing is no ties. Now let's move on to scoring. I'm going to put, say, that I had 40 points, that the red player had 38 points, and that the yellow player only had 17 points. So for scoring, I got first. So the, the player with the highest score is going to get one of these gold chip pieces. That's gonna be worth three points. Next, the person in second place, the second highest score is going to get a silver chip piece. That's worth two points. A person with the third player spot is going to get a bronze, the third highest score. That's only worth one point. And lastly, let's say the white piece is playing as well and they have the lowest score of only 12 points. They're going to get nothing. You get nothing if you score after third place. All right, let's play another round. So I'm going to move all of our lovely little colored chip pieces off the play space. You are going to then give those dice to the player who had the highest score last round. Then you are going to take the old challenge card and throw it in the box. You don't need it anymore. You're gonna take the next challenge card from your face down pile of cards and assess it. On this challenge card, that void dice value is now going to be negative five. So this yellow square is telling me that I can re-roll my dice up to four times, but every time I roll, I have to roll all seven together. I can't pick and choose this time. And lastly, all dice are going to count. No special rules for that. Nothing is negative. Everything just adds to your score. So let's get playing. Big money, big money. That wasn't awful, especially since, again, everything counts this round, which is nice. Uh, but I did get a void value, which is bad. So I'm gonna wanna re-roll this. I have two fives, a void dice, two twos, a four, and another four. You know what, I've got, I've got four more tries after this, so I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> Worse. All right, so this time I have two void dice, so that would be negative 10 right off the bat. I probably don't want that. All right. That's okay, it's okay. So I have one more reroll after this, so I can either choose to stay where I'm at, which is okay, but not amazing, or really risk it and risk getting a lot of void dice. So for this round, I'm going to say that I'm gonna keep it. Now a good strategy tip is if you're going later in the game, you don't need to have the highest score humanly possible. You just want to be high enough that you get some points over your opponents. All right, so after I total all of my dice together, it gave me a score of 19. So I'm going to then take my fun little blue tracker again, find the 19, pop it there. Um, again, make sure that you cleared out your number token beforehand. So after everybody else has taken a turn, we're going to score and continue on. Now I wanna show you guys one more challenge card. So I'm gonna reset. Again, normally everybody would take a turn. You would do all the point scoring tokens. Let's say that I got a third this time. So I'm gonna take a bronze token and we're gonna move on to the next challenge card. All right, now let's head into our last example round. So I already flipped over that challenge card. Let's take a look at it. So looking at the green square, the void value for this round is going to be zero. So it's not really gonna help or hurt me. Then looking at the yellow square, that's gonna mean I can re-roll the dice as many times as I want to, but every single time I roll the dice, I'm gonna have to like freeze a dice by setting it off to the side. It's gonna be locked in. I'm not gonna be able to re-roll it. I can do that with just one dice or as many dice as I want. When I have no more dice I can lock in, my turn is gonna be over. Lastly, how we're gonna score this time is gonna be a little fun. 
So the only dice score are dice that you can put into a group that adds up to 10. So say I have a five and a five, that would be a group. Three threes and a one could also be a group. So essentially they have to be in a group of 10. The dice cannot be part of more than one group of 10. Anything that is not one of those groups of 10 is going to be subtracted from your score at the end. So you really want to be careful with how you're re-rolling. So now let's play around. See how I do. Move that over there. Y'all know the drill at this point. Big money, big money. Okay. Now it's time for math. So I have three threes. Really the max my score could be, like best case scenario is 30. I kind of have to keep that in mind. It's a bit of a trickier round. I really don't want to end up having a bunch of dice that um, are going to be subtracted. But the nice thing about the void dice being zero is that I can just kind of throw those on to anything that I want to. Honestly, I'm going to lock in the zero because I know I can add that to anything. It's not going to be a negative. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and lock that void in. Keep rolling. Okay, I got two void. A couple twos and a three, that's two, four, six, seven, eight, nine. That's not bad, but that's really kind of banking that I'm gonna get a one. I'm gonna lock in that three, since at least it's a bigger contributor. I feel like that's not a bad thing to do. All right, so I've locked in these two, the void and the three. Gonna re-roll. Oh, okay, now we're cooking with gas. So that's a five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna keep these two, and I have my first group of ten locked in. Now I'm gonna re-roll these three. So now I have three dice left. Okay, two void and a five. I'm gonna lock in another void because at least I know then that's a zero, and I'm gonna re-roll these last two. Getting down to the wire. Oh. I did it again. I got two fives. So I'm not going to have to subtract anything from my score because I am good at this game. Or maybe I'm just lucky. <laughs> now I have to stop because I want to lock both of these in, which means I have no more dice to re-roll. So let's skew my favorite thing, which is math, which is pretty easy this round because I had to do groups of 10. So my first group is going to be five plus three plus two plus zero, which is 10. Then I have five plus five plus zero, which is also 10, which is gonna give me a, a nice round total of 20. So let's pretend that everybody else played. Let's say somebody got a 16. One person uh, didn't score at all, so they are gonna have a zero. And then that last person got an 11 or let's say they got a 23. So that means I'm gonna get a silver this round because I had the second highest score. After you've played all seven rounds, it's time to tally up your points. Remember that gold point tokens are worth three, silver point tokens are worth two, and those bronze point tokens are worth one. Whoever has the highest number at the end of the game is going to have the highest score and be the big winner. So in conclusion, high score is a highly replayable game. Also, since you're basically making quadratic equations, it's really great in a classroom setting to teach kids those basic math skills. I really hope you found this video helpful, and if you're still a bit confused on any of those challenge cards, please check page six, seven, and eight in the manual for a full breakdown on everything you might need to know to read those challenge cards. Now, I hope you all have a great game night and that you may always roll the highest score.